Hello, uh, my name's James, otherwise known as James Astrophotography, if you've seen me already on Instagram or TikTok. Um, and this is my brand new YouTube channel. So this is my first video. Um, if you want to subscribe or anything, feel free to leave the video a like. Um, but for today's video, I think what we're going to do is, is answer some of your questions that I received on Instagram, or at least the most frequently asked ones. And then we're going to head outside unpack the telescope, set everything up, and see if we can get some pictures of the Monkey Nebula. So the first question that I've chosen for today's video is how did you start astrophotography? Along with another question, how long have you been doing astrophotography? And for those two questions, I'd say I started doing very basic astrophotography of things like the Moon and the Milky Way roughly four or five years ago. And since then, I've obviously progressed my images to doing things like galaxies and nebulae, as you've probably seen. Um, but yeah, it didn't really start getting too serious until around a year ago, I guess, where I've started to get a bit more advanced. At. The next question is, what kind of telescope do you use? So I use a refractor telescope, and it has 550mm focal length, and it is a Skywatcher Esprit 100ED, if that means anything to any of you. Um, yeah, it's a very good telescope for deep sky astrophotography, not so much for planetary, um, but yeah, it's a great scope and I've just recently bought it. Um, another question, what camera do I use? I use a ZWO CCD and that is a dedicated astrophotography camera. It's a colour camera, so not monochrome, so I don't add any colour to my images. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. ZWO ASI CCD. Okay, next question. Um, how long does it take to take each photo? Uh, that's a great question, actually. So I take sub exposures, and that basically means that I take lots of individual photos and then stack them all up in a pre processing software. So for galaxies, I tend to do one to two minutes exposure. And then for nebulae, I'd say I tend to do between three to five minutes. Um, and that's just depending on the target's brightness. But altogether, once I've stacked them all, it tends to have an integrated exposure of two hours. And that's just for a rough image. So I'm hoping I'll be able to stack longer exposures in the future. Uh, another question that I received that I thought was good was, are the colours shown in your picture the actual colours of the galaxies? And yes, they are. So I use a colour camera, which means that I don't have to add any colour to my images like you would with a monochrome CCD. Um, yeah, so what I do is, is I will do noise reduction and change the contrast and brightness, but I won't actually change the different colour balance or anything like that. So yeah, these are the real colours of the galaxies. Okay, and the last question before we head outside. Um, do you take all your pictures in your page yourself? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, all the pictures are my original images. I'll put some up around here if I can manage to edit it. Um, yeah, I take all the pictures myself using my telescope and my camera, as I mentioned earlier in the questions. So I hope that answered the majority of the most frequently asked questions that I've received so far. Um, feel free to message me on Instagram or otherwise if you have any extra questions. Um, let's head outside. Okay, so as you can hopefully see, I'm outside and I'm going to skip past all the telescope setup for this video as it's probably already going to be quite long. But I'll do a separate video on that telescope setup and I'll be back once I've set it up. outside now and I thought I'd just give a really quick tour of what's going on here just so you know so this is obviously the main refractor and this is my tracking mount and it's called an equatorial tracking mount and that's basically because it spins on this uh, right ascension and declination axis here so if I can just show you this other one you can see those 
and then I'll tighten those up. And basically that's going to track the night sky for me while I'm imaging, because obviously it moves, stars will move across the sky because of the Earth's rotation. Uh, so the next step of setup is that I'm going to align this axis of the mount with the North Star, and then you can see this is going to rotate with the sky as it spins around the North Star. I'm just going to put in a quick image here of my image of the stars going around Polaris, just so you understand what's going on. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is my camera. And this is my guide scope, which is also aligned with the main refractor. I haven't got my auto guider on tonight. I don't think I'll bother with it tonight. But sometimes I'll put in an extra camera in here, which will help track the night sky. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can see here, my camera's plugged in with a little cable to my computer. And basically that's just how I uh, get my images, because it's a computerized camera. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna wait for it to get dark now and then I'll start doing my line. So it's the next day now, and as you will have probably already seen, I ran into a bit of a problem last night, and that is that the Monkey Head Nebula actually went below the horizon quite early in the evening. So I shot a few raw frames of the Monkey Nebula, and then I actually moved on to a target called Whirlpool Galaxy. And I've shot this one before, and it came out very purpley, um, which wasn't very close to the true colour. That's probably due to some discrepancies on the camera. But I reshot it tonight, and it's come out really well. I probably already put a video in there, but I'll put one up again here now. And um, yeah, so as you can see, it's a lot more blue than my first image, which I released on my Instagram probably a week or two ago now. Um, and yeah, that's M51, Whirlpool Galaxy. I'm just gonna quickly explain what you're actually seeing in this image now. So. This is the Whirlpool Galaxy, as I said, which means it's actually outside our Milky Way galaxy. Um, in fact, it's 31 million light years, roughly. And this light year is a measure of distance. And just to put to scale how large that light year is, um, light will travel around the Earth about seven and a half times in a second. So that shows you how fast the light is. And the light that's leaving that galaxy will actually take 31 million light years to reach Earth. So the light that I'm actually receiving on the camera will show me how the galaxy was 31 million light years ago. Another quick fact about this galaxy, which I'll label up here now, is that although Charles Messier actually labelled it as one galaxy in roughly the 1750s, um, there's actually two galaxies here. So the main galaxy, M51A, as it's been renamed, is the slightly larger spiral-shaped galaxy in the middle. And it's actually pulling in an irregular dwarf galaxy called M51B, which is where it gets its name, the Whirlpool Galaxy, as its gravitational attraction is actually sucking in that smaller dwarf galaxy. Okay, so I think that concludes our video for today. I'm going to be posting quite frequently on YouTube, but also on these social medias up here if you want to go give them a look. And yeah, so feel free to subscribe and hit the little bell icon as you're often encouraged to do. Um, yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon.